If you ever happen to fall down the urban legends rabbit hole, you'll very quickly discover that Korean legends in particular are pretty damn crazy. Of course, some are silly, superstitious quirks, however, some are the stuff of nightmares. So, today on Top 5 Scary Videos, I'm going to be counting down our list of the top 5 scary Korean urban legends. Before we begin, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. Let's jump in. In at 5, Ban Death. This is quite a bizarre one that I'm honestly surprised I never heard of before. Supposedly in Korea, there is a genuine fear of fan death. Now, fan death is a well known belief in Korean culture where it is thought that if you have an electric fan running in a closed room with an unopened window, you will quite literally die. Now, of course, there is no definitive evidence to support this strange claim, yet it's still widely believed. Where this legend came from is unclear, but fears of electric fans date back to their introduction to Korea with stories existing in the 20s and 30s, warning the risks of nausea, asphyxiation and facial paralysis to electric fans. Yeah, this is not a joke. Now you're probably asking yourself what the proposed cause of death actually are. Right? Well, first up is hypothermia, heat stress. Now, air movement will increase sweat evaporation, which cools the body, but in extreme heat, when the blown air is warmer than the body's temperature, it will increase the heat stress placed on the body and in turn causing heat exhaustion. Now, the EPA, aka the Environmental Protection Agency, discourages people from using fans in closed rooms without ventilation. However, they do approve of a fan if a window is open. Very strict fan rules here, guys. Now, the second proposed cause of death is asphyxiation. It is alleged that fans may cause asphyxiation by oxygen displacement and carbon dioxide intoxication. Honestly, I've spent my whole life using fans and I'm still here. I think. Anyway. I don't know. In at 4, Red Surgical Mask. As most know, plastic surgery is quite a big deal in Korean culture, as it is in America and the rest of the world, with the pursuit of perfection a thing that most strive towards. So this legend goes, I quote, A man is sitting in an empty subway car when a tall, thin woman walks in and sits in front of him. Her hair is dark and long, it covers most of her face, but he can see that she has a red surgical mask on. Thinking nothing of it, he leans back and watches the door close. The man notices her eyes and she catches him staring. He smiles at her. She asks the man, Am I pretty? Taken aback, the man stammers, Yes. She takes a mask off, revealing the rest of her face. There was a gash from ear to ear, her gums, teeth and ligaments showing. She screams at the man, Am I pretty now? In terror, the man tries to get her as far away from the woman as possible. She takes out a scalpel and makes her way to him when the doors open and the man runs out. Now, this legend may sound familiar to a lot of you, and that's because it shares very similar roots to Slip Mouthed Woman, a malevolent figure from Japanese folklore who partially covers her face with a mask or object and carries some sort of sharp instrument. According to popular legend, she asks potential victims if they find her attractive. If they respond no, she will kill them with her weapon. However, if they say yes, she will reveal that the corners of her mouth are slipped from ear to ear. Now, it's uncertain where the legend originated from, whether it was Japan or Korea, but regardless, it's straight up terrifying. Coming in at three, soul stealing dreams. Now, this one is truly terrifying because not only does it involve your dreams, but also your dead family members. It's f the legend goes that dreaming of a dead loved one is a bad omen, especially near water. It is said that the dead family member will call you towards them and if you embrace them in your dream, they will steal your soul away. Lovely. One particular story occurred on a Korean TV show where they would discuss hauntings and encounters with the paranormal. I quote, During one of the episodes, they had a family on where they talk about how their grandmother had passed away. The man said that he dreamt that his grandmother was beckoning him over while she was waiting deep in water. For some reason, he didn't go when he told his wife. His wife explained that going into the arms of a dead person, in water no less, was a sure sign that your soul was going to be stolen. The husband said he kept having the same dream and every time he was closer and closer to the grandmother until one day, the family realized that they had kept something of hers. They paid respects to her once more and the dream stopped. Lesson number one, if you're from Korea, do not hang on to any of your deceased family members' belongings. They will 
literally steal your soul for it. Coming in at two, the virgin ghost. Stories of virginal ghosts are everywhere in Korea. They're often found in abandoned buildings, but more typically they're found in hospitals, schools, bathrooms, cemeteries and wooded areas. Just don't go to these places and you're cool I guess. Now these virgin ghosts almost always have long hair covering their faces and dressed in white garbs. This is due to the fact that tradition stated that single women should always wear their hair up and the white garb is usually worn during death. In Confucian Korean tradition, it was a woman's role to serve her father, husband and sons. If she died before being able to fulfill this goal, she would be cursed to walk the earth for eternity. Now legend goes that when you're in the presence of a virgin ghost, you will know it. This is because you will feel a sudden change in temperature perhaps a sudden chill, and the wind will often change direction. One story goes that, I quote, A man was living on the topmost floor of the apartment building. One late night, he heard someone knocking on his door. He did not find anyone at the door, but he heard a voice telling him to count to 100 with his eyes closed and without making any noise. He started counting but got curious at 49. He opened his eyes and found a virgin ghost staring at him. It is said that virgin ghosts are most likely to be found in abandoned buildings. They are dressed in white and have long hair. Very spooky indeed. And finally, in at number one, the haunted bathroom. Now, for some very strange reason, Koreans have a lot, and I mean a lot, of stories about haunted schools, particularly haunted school bathrooms. Yeah, it's unsettling. But to be fair, Korean schools are definitely eerie. What with their dark stairwells and long hallways, they seem to be never ending. And of course, the creepy, oftentimes half lit fluorescent lights enter Korean school bathrooms, which in pop culture are often depicted as decrepit, old, crumbling, and always. Dark. Now, legend has it that one of these stalls in these bathrooms, particularly the stall located towards the back, is where a girl killed herself and supposedly now haunts it. Students whisper that the toilet flushes by itself and that the door will close with no wind around. Rumour has it that if you're alone in the bathroom, you can hear the crying. Some also state that you can often see her watching you from inside the mirror. Another legend from a similar vein talks of a ghost that emerges from the toilet and asks you if you will use red or blue toilet paper. Honestly, neither. We all use white, right? If you choose red, the ghost will cut you open. If you choose blue, the ghost will choke you to death leaving your body blue from suffocation. So lose, lose, no matter what. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any scary Korean urban legends that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos. Top 5 Scary Canadian Urban Legends Black Winds of War was Savage said, Should have just called this Top 5 Scary Eastern Canadian Urban Legends. Alright, I know, most of the legends were from Toronto or Montreal, but it's not my fault that they had the scariest legends. I'm not gonna sell you guys short. Galaxy said, Hail the Dark Queen, Lucy, the best narrator of the Amazing Family. Bless. Thank you so much. I'm gonna tell everyone that works here about that. Alexander Gonzalez said, Lucy looks like the Undertaker from WWF when he was going through the ministry and crucifying people phase. I feel like this isn't a compliment. <laughs> Thorin693 said, Scariest urban legend in Canada? Lucy McPhee. All hail Lucy the pale goddess, she who rules them all. Classic. I'm always your guys number one on all of these lists. Respect. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary vid. Until next time, see you later. Urban legends are whispered around campfires and passed down from generation to generation. They spark fear in the minds of children and even adults, embedding in your skin and lingering with you for years to come. They range from vampires, werewolves, to ghostly spirits haunting the woods. But one thing remains the same, they invoke terror. So today on Top 5 Scary Videos, I'm going to be counting down our list of the Top 5 Scary North American Urban Legends. Before we begin, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. And with that, let's jump in. Coming in at 5, Arkansas the Dog Boy. Now the name may sound ridiculous, yes, but the story is truly chilling. If you find yourself at 65 Mulberry Street in the middle of a small Arkansas town of Quintman, you may very well encounter the hulking outline of a 300 pound half man, half beast with glowing animal eyes. This is the Dog Boy. If you see him, walk quickly as he is rumoured to chase people down the street, biting at their heels. 
just like a dog. Now this legend is rare because the story behind the story may just be even creepier than the legend itself. Gerald Bettis, the only son of the Bettis family of 65 Mulberry, was reportedly a problem child, but not a cute one. No, this kid collected and tortured animals before turning his sociopathic focus to his parents, supposedly imprisoning them in their home and murdering his father. Bettis was eventually imprisoned for growing marijuana on his back porch and would later die in a state penitentiary in 1988 of a drug overdose. Spooky stuff. Coming in at 4, Colorado, Riverdale Road. Riverdale Road near Thornton, Colorado is crammed with horrifying legends to bring even the bravest paranormal investigator to their knees. Riverdale Road is notorious for having some of the most chilling and endless ghost stories, beginning with the fact that it is literally referred to as the gates to hell. Yeah, now the gates themselves are simply made of rusty iron, yet people travel from far and wide to visit them. This is because the man who built the gates lost his mind once they were finished. He then burned his entire mansion with his family asleep inside. Worse still, he was never caught or put on trial. As of now, people report that a lady in white walks the road close by the gates, with many assuming she is the man's wife, wandering, searching for her murdered children or even her husband. Another ghostly story goes that there are accidents that specifically happen to joggers all the time. Once upon a time a jogger decided to take a jog along Riverdale Road and ultimately got hit. They sadly passed away and rumour has it their spirit now haunts the road. People who walk the road are said to have heard a loud heartbeat and footsteps. If you drive by you might also feel something hitting your car when there's literally nothing there. Now there are so so many more stories but we'll end with the Native American shapeshifters. Now what makes Riverdale Road interesting isn't just the road itself but because the the area of land that it cuts through is also rumoured to be haunted. For hundreds of years there have been countless stories about Native American shapeshifters roaming the land, with many passersby spotting them on the road. According to reports, they take on different shapes and communicate with people in their own ways. They are also known to play tricks on anyone who walks down Riverdale Road, so be warned. Coming in at 3, New Jersey, The Watcher. Now this legend could honestly be the script for a horror movie. Let me break it down for you. A family begin receiving ominous notes just days after they close on their dream home. Yeah. Spooky, right? Well, this story took off back in 2015 after a young family moved into a million dollar house in Westfield, New Jersey. However, they began to get letters signed by someone only IDing themselves as The Watcher, who claimed it was their duty to watch over the house, while also spouting weird lines such as, I quote, Do you need to fill the house with the young blood I requested? And who has the bedrooms facing the street? Yeah. Creepy. The writer also noted the make of the couple's car and the comings and goings of construction crews. He also observed that the couple had three young children, stating, I quote, Was your old house too small for the growing family, or was it greed to bring me your children? Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. Now, no one quite knows the truth behind the legend, whether it was a prank or a spooky neighbor, but what we do know is that the watcher was never caught and still remains watching the house in Westfield, New Jersey. Coming in at number 2, California Turnbull Canyon. Turnbull Canyon is a 4 mile loop trail located near Whittier, California and is part of Puente Hills Preserve. It lies in the northern central part of the preserve and is an east west canyon with relatively steep drainage. Now natives call Turnbull Canyon Hatunga or the place of the devil and is supposedly where the ghosts of those slain for not converting to Christianity dwell alongside witches and Satanists who reportedly use the place to sacrifice children, whose spirits now walk along the canyon. According to other reports, Turnbull Canyon also houses the ghosts of 21 children who perished in a plane crash back in 1952. However, there are no existing records of the incident, so this may be local legend. However, what we do know is real is that in the canyon lies the remains of an old insane asylum that supposedly came back to life to kill a teen in the 1960s via long dormant electrical wire. Not only that, but there are cults, alien counters and gravity hills. The list goes on and on. Basically if something unnerves you, there is probably a story about it going down at Turnbull Canyon. Now its origin is pretty simple. Turnbull's evil dates back centuries, however it wasn't until the site was established as a fur trapping site in 1845 that things started to get a little 
art. And very quickly, word of the canyon's evil terrors spread far and wide, making it one of the world's most visited places. But not for its beauty, but due to morbid curiosity. And finally, coming in at number one, Virginia, the Bunny Man Bridge. This terrifying urban legend originated from two incidents in Fairfax County, Virginia, in 1970, but very quickly spread through the Washington, D.C. area as well. Now, like all legends, there are many variations. Most involve a man wearing a rabbit costume who attacks people with an axe or a hatchet. Now, the legend goes that in 1904, a group of convicts were piled onto a bus to be transported from an asylum in Clifton, Virginia to a nearby prison. En route, however, one of the buses crashed and the convicts managed to escape. Thankfully though, the police were able to round up all of them. All but one. As their search went on, they began to find skinned, half eaten bunnies in the woods and hanging from the overpass of Fairfax Bridge, now known as the Bunny Man Bridge. A year later, on Halloween night, several teens went to hang out under the bridge. Come morning, they were all found dead. Legend has it that if you hang out under the bridge on Halloween night, you will meet the same fate as the rabbits and the teenagers. Jump ahead to 1970, there were numerous police reports of people who had been threatened by. By a man holding an axe and wearing a white suit with bunny ears. Terrifying. A few other people also reported that the man in the suit threw an axe at them for trespassing near the bridge. To this day, there have been numerous reportings of the man with the axe, as well as the dead rabbits in the woods surrounding Fairfax Bridge, which is now known, once again, as the Bunny Man Bridge. Now, versions of the legend have varied over the years, particularly in the Bunny Man's name, motives, weapons, victims, and description, with some accounts stating that victims were mutilated and others that the Bunny Man is a ghost. However, that aside, the legend is absolutely horrifying and has prevented a lot of Virginia locals from wandering too close to the bridge. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any urban legends that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part two. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments one of my last videos, top five scary end of the world prophecies that might come true. Soul Maiden Desaad said, actually the world will end when Lucy decides it will end. No truer words have ever been spoken. Preach. Chris Miller said, Girl, you so flippin' cool, no matter how many words are butchered by the queen of scary. By the way, nice shirt and thanks for the good vids. Well, shucks, that's flippin' cool, thanks for the love. Nelson Chris said, you forgot the most important prophecy. The Queen Lucy is here, she here to reign the top 5 channel. Part 2 will feature the Queen herself, don't you fret, I'll be there, reigning as number 1. As always. Whiskey Brewer said, Lucy's frustration at having to pronounce these names will be what ends the world. <sighs> Preaching the hard facts here. I can't pronounce anything. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary bit. And until next time, see you later. Canada is incredibly large. If you were to stretch out the perimeter of the land, it could wrap around the world three times. Isn't that crazy? Anyway, with such wide expanses and uninhabited lands, it's no wonder that Canada has a considerable amount of urban legends, with Toronto and Montreal being at the forefront for ghostly activity. So today on Top 5 Scary Videos, I'm going to be counting down our list of the top five scary Canadian urban legends. Let's jump in. In at five, the lady in red in Lower Bay Station. Now, a lady in red is a popular theme in many legends and ghost stories, with few popping up across America and Canada. However, this one comes from Toronto, specifically below Bay Station, where another subway station lies, Lower Bay Station. The Toronto Transit Commission reportedly opened the station in 1966 while experimenting with routes, but soon realized that if the route was to become delayed, it would slow down the entire subway system. Therefore, it was shut down just six months later. The city later went on to build Bay Station on top of it, connecting the two platforms with a red door that is only accessible to employees. Workers and occasional movie production still use the old station, however, and it is here that folks have claimed to have seen the lady in red wandering the abandoned tracks. People have reported that she has no legs and had only black holes for eyes. 
Her apparition only lingers for 30 seconds before disappearing. Some believe it to be a woman that was pushed onto the tracks, but no records of any such incident exist. Others think it's more likely she was a former resident of Potter's Field, a cemetery for social outcasts and the poor, which the city attempted to relocate in 1855 to build the station. Coming in at 4, The Legend of Gibraltar Point Lighthouse The Gibraltar Point Lighthouse is located on the Toronto Islands in Toronto. Beginning in 1808, it is the oldest existing lighthouse on the Great Lakes and one of Toronto's oldest buildings. Now, due to its age, this lighthouse is of course shrouded in mystery, specifically regarding its first keeper, J.P. Radham Muller. According to the legend, soldiers from Fort York visited J.P. on the evening of January 2nd, 1815 in search of his bootlegged beer. But they had too much to drink and a dispute broke out, culminating in the keeper's murder. The inebriated soldiers tried to conceal their crime by chopping apart the corpse and hiding the remains. In 1893, then keeper George Dernan searched for the corpse and found part of a jawbone and coffin fragments near the lighthouse, though it was never definitively proven that they were linked to JP. As one of the oldest legends in Toronto, the truth behind the lighthouse keeper's death and disappearance remains a mystery even to this day. And the legend certainly lives on. Coming in at 3, UFO encounter in Manitoba All the way back in 1967, Stefan McCallick ventured into the woods around Falcon Lake near Winnipeg, Manitoba in search of silver and quartz, when he was startled by a gaggle of geese that erupted into a clattering of honks. According to his own report, he then noticed two cigar-shaped crafts hovering in the air before one flew away. However, the other one landed. Stefan stated that he waited half an hour before approaching. He heard mechanical noises, smelled sulfur, and felt warm air as he gradually got closer. As he did, he noticed an open door panel, and coming from within were coloured lights and muffled voices that sounded like humming. Then, out of nowhere, the door panel closed, and a blast of gas from the craft knocked Stefan back and off his feet, with his clothes being set ablaze. He managed to take them off and ran into town when he began to feel feel extremely sick. Doctors quickly discovered that his sickness was caused by radiation and officials who checked the site also discovered radioactive soil samples and metal melted into the rocks. Now, Since then, the son of Stefan has written a book about the ongoing mystery. Stan McCallick, the son of Stefan, has previously stated that he very clearly remembers the day his dad came home sick and injured after something happened to him in the Falcon Lake woods. I quote, I recalled seeing him in bed. He didn't look good at all. He looked pale, haggard. When I walked into the bedroom, there was a huge stink in the air, like a real horrible aroma of sulfur and burnt motor. It was all around and it was coming out of his pores. It was bad. The book was launched back in 2017 in conjunction with the 50th anniversary of the incident. In at 2, Headless Ghosts in Old Montreal The historic neighbourhood of Old Montreal in Quebec is known to be one of the most haunted places in all of Canada. The city's oldest road, St. Paul Street, is supposedly a walkway for the paranormal at night, with visitors often reporting sightings of ghostly horse-drawn carriages or an apparition of Marie Joseph Angelique wearing the same white robe she had on when she was executed. Not only that, but Mary Gallagher, former Lady of the Night, is reported to appear on William and Murray Streets every seven years, looking for her head, which was taken off by her one-time best friend. If this doesn't do it for you, you can also head over to the old Montreal graveyards, which are known to be abound with ghostly activity, especially in Mount Royal, North America's largest intact cemetery. Visitors have claimed to see apparitions wandering around the plots at night, as well as hear giggling creaking and other eerie noises coming from within the cemetery. More interesting still, some of the ghosts that people have reported seeing include several people who perished on the Titanic, and an often seen Algonquin man who looks over the cliff to the city below. And finally, coming in at number 1, The Cave Monster. One of the most haunting legends to come out of Canada comes to us from my city, Toronto, once again, and supposedly took place in August 1978. It was during this time that a 51 year old man named Ernest went looking for his missing kitten in a Parliament Street tunnel after crawling into an opening near his apartment building. This is where he described seeing a monster that had grey fur, red eyes and weighing approximately 
30 pounds. Now, if you're not from Toronto, we have a sprawling path system. 28 kilometers of climate controlled underground walkways and shopping. However, what if I told you this wasn't the only underground city we have? Well, as reported by the Toronto Sun in March 1979, about 10 feet into the tunnel that Ernest explored, he spotted a thin, human like figure some three feet tall, with, as previously mentioned, grey fur and slanted orange red eyes. The creature supposedly hissed at him, stating, Get out, get out, before fleeing down a side tunnel. Now, it is possible that Ernest was hallucinating or even lying, although saying that, the way the article was written seems to suggest that Laurie Goldstein, the reporter, believed him. Unfortunately, we'll likely never know what actually happened. When the story broke, the entrance to the tunnel had effectively been blocked off by collapsing concrete. Goldstein no longer remembers where the opening was, making the location virtually impossible to find. However, not long ago, someone online spoke of the underground tunnel that may have brought new light to the mystery. I quote, there is a small opening to the underground tunnels off Parliament Street in downtown Toronto. The entrance is between two apartment buildings and leads to the tunnels via the sewers. The underground city beneath Toronto has its centre beneath Gerrard Street and Church Street. Above this area, strange magnetic effects have been observed. It is believed that underground equipment utilising powerful magnetic fields are responsible for the bizarre equipment failures that often are the cause of these accidents. Well, now we know the tunnels are real, do you believe the monster? It's you decide. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any scary Canadian urban legends that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below, and perhaps we can do a part two. If you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary vid. And until next time, see you later. Alaska is known as the last frontier for a reason. It is completely isolated and has some of the most inhospitable climates known to man. Of course, when a place is so cut off from the rest of the world, you can imagine there would be spooky stories emerging from the north. And that's the case with our list today. I actually used to live in Anchorage, Alaska, and it is probably the best place I have ever lived in my whole life. And if I could return, I would. No offense to Canada, Alaska is just the best. I highly recommend if you've never been. Anyway, onto the list. This is the top five scary Alaskan urban legends. Before we begin though, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. And with that, let's jump in. Coming in at number five, Baranoff Castle. Now I should begin by saying that Alaska doesn't have any actual castles, however it used to. It was the Baranoff Castle and was home to many Russian governors in the 1800s. As of today, what remains is the hill the castle stood upon and the gorgeous hill that spirits now reside on. Now the castle has a history spanning far longer than Alaska has been a part of the USA, which I guess isn't that long to be fair. Even before the castle was abandoned, tales of a mysterious ghost of a lady in dark clothing had become a local legend. It was supposed that she was a Russian aristocrat who had committed suicide on her wedding night after marrying a man she did not love. Now she walks Castle Hill and sometimes the Russian bishop's house nearby. She is also said to be draped in diamonds and a long black veil. She is said to be out most often at the midnight hour, aren't they all? And you may catch a glimpse of her bemoaning her fate. The area is known as Castle Hill in Sitka and the site remains a popular tourist attraction, however, that is mostly due to the supernatural elements surrounding the mound. Would you dare step foot on Castle Hill? I dare you. In at number 4, Christmas Town. There's quite literally a city in Alaska called North Pole, where it is Christmas all year round. Which is a dream come true, I want to live there. However, this quaint Christmas town has a notorious reputation. In 2006, the snowy little suburb of Fairbanks was hit with a horrific incident when a group of six middle school students were arrested for plotting a Columbine style mass murder at their school. The seventh graders planned to knock out North Pole Middle School's power and telephone systems, then move systematically through the school, shooting and murdering the teachers, as well as students who picked on them. Absolutely horrible. Now, their plan would have moved forward if it weren't for an anonymous student who overheard their plans and reported them to the authorities. Thank God. It turned out that at least six students had knowledge of the plot too, but had failed to inform anyone about the potential killing spree. Seems now that Christmas Town has an awful legend surrounding it, with many movies based on the town depending
depicting it as something rotten and dangerous, maybe even haunted. Coming in at number 3, the Alaska Triangle. The Alaska Triangle, oftentimes called Alaska's Bermuda Triangle, is a place in the untouched wilderness of the frontier state where a large number of people have gone missing. The triangle connects Anchorage, Juneau and Barrow, with the latter being a small town on the state's north coast, and has some of North America's most unforgiving wilderness. Now the triangle began attracting attention back in October 1972, when a small private plane carrying US House Majority Leader Hale Boggs, Alaska Congressman Nick Begich, an aide Russell Brown, and Bush pilot Don Johns vanished into thin air while flying from Anchorage to Juneau. Following the incident, more planes began to go down, as well as hikers going missing, even Alaskan residents and tourists seemed to just vanish into thin air without any explanation. Since 1988, more than 16,000 people have disappeared in the Alaska Triangle, with a missing person rate at more than twice the national average, which is absolutely terrifying, why aren't we talking about this? Now the disappearances are often blamed on everything, from severe weather to aliens to swirling energy vortexes, to an evil shape-shifting demon of Tlingit Indian law called Kushtaka. Absolutely insane, but I respect these theories. Honestly, it's probably just the weather, but you're cool. In at number 2, Sable Wolf. Legend has it that Inuits described a wolf-like evil spirit of the Nahani Valley that kills people by biting their heads off. In some reports, the animal had long saber tooth fangs and weighed upwards of 600 pounds, all of which they would use to hunt and kill their prey. The so-called monster has been spotted in Alaska at least once by an American mechanic, who described it as a wolf on steroids, as well as the crew of an American TV show. Alaska Monsters, who claim to have an encounter with the beast, however, there may be an historical answer for the beast. Way back when, there was an animal called the dire wolf that lived up until the most recent ice age. Thanks to research, science tells us that this wolf averaged about 100 to 150 pounds and was first thought to be predecessors to dogs as well as the grey wolf. The dire wolf had bone crushing jaws, however archaeological evidence suggests it was a scavenger as well as a hunter. However, whether they still exist today, no one has a definitive answer, so perhaps it is a dire wolf folks have been spotting or maybe it is a sabre wolf. What do you guys think though? Could just be a wolf. And finally in number 1, the abandoned copper mine. This abandoned copper mining camp is a national historic landmark district that became a bustling mining camp filled with miners and their families. Now in 1925 a geologist predicted that the area would soon be mined out, and he was correct. Because by 1938 Kennecott was a ghost town and as of today is a popular tourist attraction. Now more interesting still in the Kennecott mines, it was not gold that folks were digging for but instead copper. After copper was discovered in 1900 in the area, a group of wealthy investors formed the Kennecott Copper Corporation to mine the incredibly rich copper before, of course, it was abandoned along with the railroad, which was eventually abandoned due to the cost of constantly changing its position across a nearby glacier, and the mining camp in turn became a ghost town, a very haunted ghost town at that. According to reports, the spectral phenomena in the area, which included tombstones appearing and then vanishing along hiking trails, sounds of crying children and poltergeist activity, was enough to drive away state government workers who were trying to redevelop the area into government housing projects during the 1990s. Yikes. If you want to venture into the supernatural realm, you can with the abandoned mine offering tours for those brave souls. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any Alaskan urban legends that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part two. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos. Top 5 Worst Horror Movie Sequels of All Time Part 2. Joshua Rodriguez said, Dream Warriors is my personal fave and probably the second best in the series. I mean, you're not wrong, personally I think it's third best, right behind Wes Craven's New Nightmare and of course, the original, which will always be number one. Corey Pranch said, The way you pronounce Leprechaun makes me happy. Really? I think I say it normally. Leprechaun, 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 Leprechaun. You're welcome. Is that a fetish? Pillmatic42 said, Lucy is back and she's killing it on these videos. Then she's gonna kill me. Oh my god. I mean, it's less fun when you know it's coming. Ask Jack, I kill him every day. The Real with Green Hill said, Friends and family, you need to find yourself a girlfriend. Me? No, I need to find myself a Lucy. Sorry to break it to you. There's only one me and you can't have me. Sucks. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary bit. Until next time, see you later. Established in 1903, this abandoned copper mining camp is a national historic landmark. Meow.
Ke uh, Kennicott, yeah. I think that's, oh, I'm trying to remember. Kennicott, Kennicott. Demon of Tling, um, Tling, Ting, uh, oh, shit. I don't want to f that up. Tling it? I'll say Tling it. Tling it. Tling it. Tling it. Tlinger. There are urban legends and myths everywhere. Just about everything has a story, but Russia's secretive Soviet past has become the perfect breeding ground for tall tales above all else. So today on Top 5 Scary Videos, I'm going to be counting down our list of the top 5 scary Russian urban legends. Before we begin, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. Let's jump in. In at 5, The Collector. The Collector is a really catch-all legend for creepy hermetic names neighbors that might be doing something strange in their basements. However, the most common legend is that of the neighbor who collects human body parts and proudly displays them in mason jars around their home. However, this legend has some real world roots, unlike the rest of our list. Back in 2011, Russian police arrested a man described by the media as a cemetery collector for digging up 29 corpses and dressing the remains in female clothing to display around his home. This is an absolutely horrifying legend that became even more sickening after this event came to large. You may never know who your neighbor is or what they're doing after hours. Just don't go to their basement if they invite you inside. In at four, the black bird of Chernobyl. Now this legend garnered traction on the internet, of course, and focuses on a creature that is allegedly seen in Ukraine around the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, specifically in the weeks leading up to the disaster on April 26, 1986. Now its description is very similar to that of the Mothman and is humanoid in appearance and was presumed to have been black or dark grey in colour. It was also claimed by witnesses that it possessed wings and glowing red eyes. The black bird was spotted by several workers before they passed away, with some theorising that the bird was serving as an omen of doom, warning the workers of the lethal radiation within the plant. Not only that, some of the survivors shortly before the nuclear meltdown began to experience weird goings on, including nightmares, threatening phone calls and encounters with the winged bee. East. Following the disaster and as the Soviet helicopters arrived, circling the smouldering plant, dropping clay, sand, lead and other extinguishing chemicals on top of the flame, some of the workers claimed to have witnessed a 20 foot bird gliding through the undulating tentacles of irradiated smoke, which was spewing from the reactor. Frightening. In at three, the curse of the Ivan Vasily. Ivan Vasily is perhaps one of the most terrifying and shocking urban legends that is actually true and exists in the Russian history books. Now, the ship was built in 1897 as a transport freight across the Baltic Sea to the Gulf of Finland and driven by a single triple expansion steam engine. The ship was reliable, stable, and nothing unusual happened for the first five years it was on the sea. Then, one night changed everything. In 1903, the Russian government was preparing for war with Japan. So the freighter's role changed drastically overnight and the ship was ordered to carry cargo of war materials to Russian warships. The ship was first sent to the west coast of Africa to get coal and after they stocked up, the crew noticed a change on the ship. Something wasn't quite right. However, they continued and set sail across the Indian Ocean. Now, the uneasiness that the crew was feeling was as if there was an invisible entity on the ship, as if someone was watching them and the atmosphere just felt wrong or negative. The crew were visibly scared. Then one night, a man on the ship saw an apparition, a ghostly figure that was glowing with an odd mist, walking across the deck before disappearing behind a lifeboat. Of course, the sightings only made things worse for the crew, who were now on high alert. Just a few nights Nights later, another crew member let out a terrifying scream, sending everyone into a panic. Then men went crazy and began to fight each other until one of them jumped into the ocean to his death. The crew had absolutely no idea what they were doing. A couple nights later, the crew just out of nowhere started to fight yet again and another man jumped overboard to his death. The crew felt like they were being possessed by an unseen force. Once the ship finally docked, most of the crew abandoned the ship and new crew were hired to handle the cargo. Well, out on the seas, the the same thing began to happen, resulting in two people dying on the journey, including the captain, who flung himself overboard. This went on for some time until the crew finally realized the only way to deal with it was to burn the ship down. The sailors gathered in tow.
tugboats and watched on as the ship went down in flames. Coming in at number 2, The Well to Hell. The Well to Hell is a legend about a putative borehole in Russia which was reportedly drilled so deep that it broke through to hell itself. The legend holds that a team of Russian engineers in an unnamed place in Siberia had drilled a hole that was 14.4 kilometers deep before breaking through to a cavity. The researchers were of course intrigued by the discovery and lowered an extremely heat tolerant microphone into the well. The temperature was reportedly 1832 Fahrenheit and the chamber was filled with flames. Screams began to be picked up on the microphone, tormented screams that were begging for help. However, the recording was later found to be looped together from various sound effects. Now, in reality, the Soviet Union had drilled a hole more than 12 kilometers deep in the Kola Super Deep Borehole, located not in Siberia but on the Kola Peninsula. Upon reaching the depths of 12,262 meters in 1989, interesting geological anomalies were found, but nothing supernatural and definitely not the well to hell. And finally, coming in at number one, the Russian sleep experiment. This is perhaps one of the greatest urban legends of not just Russia, but of all time. It's simply known as the Russian sleep experiment, and according to the legend, researchers in the 1940s took five prison inmates and locked them in an airtight chamber with a special gas to keep them awake. This was so they could see the effects of prolonged sleep deprivation and promised the subjects their freedom if they could go 30 days without sleep. The results were, of course, absolutely horrific. On the fifth day, paranoia began to set in and the prisoners stopped talking to each other. On the ninth day, a few of them began screaming relentlessly while others tore apart the books they were given, smeared them with feces and blocked off the one way mirror so they couldn't be seen. Then out of nowhere the screaming stopped. Three days went by without sound from inside the chamber. The researchers tried to address them via the intercom, stating that they were coming in and for the prisoners to lie flat on the floor. Then one of the voices answered, we no longer want to be freed. After 15 days, the researchers finally opened the door, and the sight was apparently horrific. One of the prisoners was dead and completely torn to shreds, with chunks of him stuffed into the floor drain. The other four prisoners had mutilated themselves to the brink of death and were terrified at the thought of going to sleep and begged to stay inside the chamber. They were forcibly removed, and when surgeons tried to fix the damage they had inflicted on themselves, they resisted so strongly that they couldn't be sedated. They laughed as they were sewn back together, fully awake and aware. Eventually, after enough demanding, they were returned back to the chamber, after the head researcher told his team to lock them back in. However, one member of the team resisted, shot the head researcher, and then shot one of the two remaining prisoners. Before killing the last prisoner, he asked just one thing, what are you? The prisoner responded, have you forgotten so easily? We are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. After this, the researchers shot the prisoner in the heart. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any Russian legends that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part two. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments one of our last videos. Top 5 Scary Cursed Games You Should Never Play Beezer1225 said there are more instructions for these games than an IKEA cabinet. Ain't that the truth. Now imagine having to film that video twice. That was my reality. <laughs> Isis Blackfeather said, Do you have a summer cold? I do, it's the worst, and you seemed a bit stuffy, so feel better. Uh, actually, I'm recovering from a five day bender in Vegas. You may think I'm joking, but I'm not. There's no cold, just alcohol. Carlo Crisanto said, I have a game where you can summon Lucy. You face a mirror at midnight and chant Lucy McPhee. Lucy McPhee, your blue eyes enchant me. Your accent hypnotizes me. On a count of three, come and find me. If Lucy finds you, you'll be possessed by her and have glowing blue eyes and an accent. Have fun playing. Wow. What to say, really, other than you should all de definitely be playing this game. I'll definitely possess you all. Have fun. <laughs> and on that fun note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary bit. Until next time, see you later.